Now in today's video, I wanted to share with you guys a little tiny PC that I recently purchased. This is a HP 285G3, and it's technically classed as a micro tower, but this one's a little bit different to all of them ones out there that I've seen. This one is actually a Ryzen-based system, so of course, we're gonna see if we can game on it. Now, like I say, this is a Ryzen-based HP system, and it was actually one of the cheapest I could find. I paid around £50 for this, and I didn't really buy it because of the AM4 platform inside, although that is a big benefit. I bought it because I thought it was absolutely cute. I was originally looking at Intel-based systems, but then we have to go through the process of putting graphics cards in just to even see if we can really game on it. But with a Ryzen processor, of course, being an APU, I thought this little system would have at least a little bit of a chance of playing something more modern. I don't know why, but I just love the way that this system looks. It is technically classed as a micro tower, and I do really love small PCs, so that was a bit of a flavor for me. And it pretty much has everything that you need. The only thing that this one is missing that I could have got from a different Intel-based one was a USB-C connection, but I don't use that many things in a USB-C yet, so it's not really a big problem for me. But Technically on the front, we do have a couple of USB 3s. We have an SD card reader, power switch, a headphone socket, and we do have a slot here for a DVD drive. Yes, that is right. This system does come with a DVD drive, as do many office-based PCs. So that's always an added bonus, although I probably will never use it because I don't even really think I own anything on disc anymore. But apart from that, the unit is pretty clean. It looks really nice, and the size of it just makes it perfect for putting onto the side of a desk and looking pretty professional as well. Now these systems are pretty basic. There's not really a lot to them. If we just pop the side off here, which is taken off by a thumb screw, we can take a look inside. So a little bit tight on the side there, but of course there's no glass windows on this. We just slide the side off like that. And as you can see, there's barely anything inside the system. We do have this extra tray here, which is to hold your hard drives and SSDs and that, but this system has something a little bit cooler than that. To remove this tray, all we need to do is remove four screws from around the side. They're not difficult to do, and there's not really a lot that holds it into place, but we'll start loosening them off. One thing that you should do before you actually start taking this off is actually undo the DVD drive. So we'll unplug that first, just pop the connections out. There's a little clamp on the inside that we push and then the drive comes out the front just like that. So that is the DVD drive. It uses a laptop based drive. So we've got laptop based connections that will limit us on if we want to do anything else with those connections later on. But I like the way that this system looks. I like the fact that it's got a DVD drive, so I'm probably going to leave it in. With the four screws now removed from that side tray, we can actually just slide it out. There is an arrow here that says remove the cage by sliding it out to the side, and we tip it up like that. The cables on the inside are hooked on, so we want to just remove them for now, and we'll talk about what cables it does have later. We'll just pop them all off like that, and then we can just take that out like that. So that is the tray here that will hold the DVD drive. You can also put in a hard drive. So there's a hard drive here. You can also put another hard drive on here or there are markings on it where you can actually put SSDs and things like that. But like I say, this one is a little bit different. So when we look inside the system here, of course, we've got the cabling for our DVD drive. The motherboard is a pretty standard micro ATX format, although it does have an extra piece on the front, which provides the USBs and things like that on the front. So it won't necessarily actually fit inside a normal case. You have no front IO that's off of the motherboard itself, so there's no way of cabling it up. Then we have the CPU in here. This is just a very basic cooler that they provide. It's gonna be good enough for the 65 watt chip in here. And the chip that we've got in here is actually the AMD Ryzen 3. 2200G. Now I've never had one of those chips before, but I've heard they're reasonably good, particularly for older titles, but I'm sure we'll see when we start to try and play some games. In terms of RAM, we're very limited again because we've only got one stick here of eight gigabytes of DDR4. That is a little bit of a shame because I do believe that this motherboard being a B350 will actually run a dual channel memory. So maybe that's an upgrade that we can make later on. And then when I was talking about storage before, in terms of storage, we do have access to an NVMe drive. Now for this system here, it's not the original drive, of course, because for Office PCs, they tend to take them out. So that's what they've done here. And they've replaced it with a very basic 128 gigabyte SATA M.2 drive, which works perfectly fine. We can get Windows on there. We're not going to change that for now. We're going to try and game on this system with exactly what's in there. Keep it all the same. When it comes to the fan on the back, it's a 92 millimeter exhaust fan. There is no additional fans in this system. That's a bit of a shame. It could do with an extra one, I think, because if this thing was to get a little bit warm, it's quite enclosed in there. But 
We'll see about that going forward. And then we come to the biggest limitation in the entire system. And that of course is the power supply. The power supply in here is an 80 plus gold power supply, but it is only 180 watts. That is more than enough to power the Ryzen APU that we've got. But if you wanted to stick any other kind of cards in here, like a graphics card, to be honest, there's probably not a lot that you can actually do. You could probably get away with something like a GT 1030 or a GT 710, but anything above that is going to need way more than 180 watts. So you're pretty much stuck there. Of course, being 180 watts as well, there is no extra PCIe connections. So you're not going to be able to get away with that. If you do want to upgrade one of these, you're going to have to get a different power supply. And to be honest, the options are limited. And the reason for that is because it is a proprietary system. The power supply in this one only has a couple of connections on it. There is no 24 pin or 20 pin. You have two four pins and then you have an extra cable at the bottom, which is some kind of signaling to the power supply, which means you can't even change it for a normal power supply. If you were to try and change this for like an SFX power supply or maybe a TFX power supply, it just wouldn't work because there's no way of the power supply telling the motherboard that it's actually there. So that is a bit of a shame, but you get used to it when you start talking about pre-builds and OEM systems, because that's exactly what they do to stop you from upgrading them, to be honest. They want you to buy the next one or at least pay them a lot of money for an upgrade. But like I said before, we're not going to be upgrading this one today. We're just going to see how well it games perfectly fine on its own. And maybe we'll do a bit of an upgrade later on. So. I think now what we'll do is we'll put the system back together again and then we'll see if we can play some games. What did I tell you? How cute is this system? It even looks really tiny against this 27 inch monitor and it's working perfectly fine. Everything seems to have booted up. We are in Windows. It even came with a Windows 11 professional license. So I even made a little bit of a saving there. They're not that expensive to buy, about £10, something like that, if you get them from CD key websites and stuff like that. But it does mean that this is a even more cheaper system. It's like £40 for the hardware alone. It actually looks pretty nice. It's running. We've got the fans running. I'm going to leave the side off of it because it is a little bit warm in the room today and I don't know if these systems can cope very well with the heat or not because of the lack of ventilation and fans in there but everything seems to be working I can see that things are working we've got a picture on we'll just double check the DVD drive see if that opens so added bonus the DVD drive does open it's a little bit dusty in there but it probably works not that I'm ever going to use it or anything like that but it does work and we'll just shut it there when it comes to games there's probably not a lot we can actually play on a 2200g I have actually used 2400g's in the past I used to actually stream on this channel on Twitch on a 2400g but it was very old games and it worked perfectly fine but this one is not as good as that one to be honest this is obviously the ryzen 3 so we are talking about a four core four thread processor here with vega 8 graphics which are not terrible but they're not the best either so the selection of games that we're going to be able to test is going to be very limited we're not going to go for anything super brand new because we just simply know it will not play those games so we're going to try a couple of others now the first game that we're going to try is black mesa it is of course the remake of half-life one i'm not really sure how well this system will perform on it because it is much more demanding than the original game it's more well it's actually a little bit more demanding than half-life 2 itself but Maybe this system should be able to cope with it. I'm hoping it should be. This is probably the lowest thing that I'm going to try really, but let's see what kind of thing that we get. We've got our stats currently running in the corner, and if we just reset them there, we can see that we're currently getting an average of around 58 frames per second. But if we head over to the settings, we'll see what we're currently configured to. Go to our options, video settings. So we are currently running in 1080p. We're probably going to restrict all testing today to 1080p because this system just clearly isn't designed for anything more than that. We may even need to drop it a little bit. We'll drop down. We've got vertical sync off. We're currently running at a mixture of low settings here and the FPS seemed OK. So we're going to leave it low. The game looks OK like that. So let's head back into the game. Now, for anybody that hasn't played this game before, it's absolutely fantastic. You should definitely check it out. It is the remaster of Half-Life 1, as I said before. So if you've played that game before you'll probably like this one to be honest because they really did a great job with it but so far the game is running perfectly fine it looks okay in the low settings it doesn't look terrible to be honest for the game that it is and when we go into these slightly darker areas we are getting around 60 fps which is good to see it's not too bad i'm not sure how it would perform in even more open up areas but well, I'm sure we'll figure that out once we get there. But the game is running beautifully smooth at the moment. We're getting a 1% low of around 40 FPS, which is okay. That's playable. It's nice and smooth. There's no big stutters anywhere. The game's running. So I think we can kind of class this as a bit of a success here. I don't want to up the graphics anymore because it doesn't 
feel as smooth as it should do but it is more than playable so let's try a different game now the next game we're going to test is also not a new game it is a very old game it is Tomb Raider from 2013 it's technically classed as a very well optimized game on most hardware but as you can see from the stats in the corner we're not having a great time so far but I'm not 100% sure what this is actually configured to so let's jump into the settings and see what kind of settings we've got there running into the settings now we've got a graphics options we'll take a look at our basic settings we are currently running at 1080p we've got a refresh rate of 24 hertz i don't know why we'll go up to that we do have vsync on so we're going to drop that off for now the quality is set to normal and if we just head over to advanced we can see that so let's see what 1080p maybe we'll drop it a little bit low we'll drop it to low settings because this is a little bit more demanding than uh, black mesa so it probably won't perform as well but let's have a look let's apply those settings and jump back into game now with those settings configured 1080p with a low preset the game doesn't look uh, terrible at all to be honest it looks okay for an oldie and everything seems to be running reasonably smooth so far so we've currently got an average of 44 frames per second with a 1% low of 39 that does mean that the game is more than playable lots of people out there would actually play this game and play lots of games at that kind of uh frames per second particularly games with controllers and this game runs flawlessly with a controller it's what i would actually play the game on i wouldn't necessarily use a keyboard and mouse but so far everything is running smooth 44 frames per second on average and it is increasing our custom or our continuous is going up to around 50 now and again so not a bad result for a little tiny system that costs around 50 pounds if you do want to play this game you can get away with it everything seems reasonably smooth um, I'm not exactly sure what again what's going to happen once the game opens up but things do go a little bit slower once we look up into the sky and we can look further afield but I think this game is probably playable at this of course this is the lowest that we can get in this resolution so I'm not sure if dropping it to 720p may actually give us a 60 fps experience but let's drop over to the settings and see if we can actually get one from 720p I know a lot of you out there will not want to play games at 720p but for those of you that have a very limited budget and this is the only thing that you can get maybe that is a sacrifice that you need to make so dropping the resolution down to 720p has actually boosted our performance quite significantly we are currently getting an average now of 84 frames per second with a one percent low of 74. the visual appearance of the game though is not great at all you can definitely tell it's in 720p so let's head back over to the settings and we'll see if we can just increase that up to a normal setting just try to smooth out the game a little bit make it look a little bit nicer things do hang a little bit when you're uh, in the settings trying to apply stuff and that's purely down to the process that we've got I think so let's go back into game now running the game in a normal preset it doesn't actually look any better than it did in low to be honest you can definitely tell the game is in 720p and we have significantly dropped below that 80 fps that we were getting a minute ago so the game isn't as smooth in actual fact the one percent lows have dropped quite a bit now since we've gone up to a normal preset and we can really feel it as we're turning the character so if you are wanting to play this game 1080p and a 30 fps experience is more than a, a, okay if you are going to run in the game in low and you're happy doing that if you're going to run in 720 again running in low will boost you above that 60 fps but it's not a brilliant result for the system but maybe for the money it's okay but let's try something even more modern and, and see if we can get any kind of playable experience out of a game that was at least released in the last five years now straight is one of my favorite games to play it is a very small game and it didn't cost a lot when you went to buy it and that's because it was done by an indie studio but they did a fantastic job of it and it did explode it's got a very big cult following and it doesn't have that high of recommendation specs i think the uh, minimum gpu for this is like a gtx 650 ti so that's not a lot at all but as we can see at the moment this little system is massively struggling we're currently getting an average of only 12 frames per second with a one percent low of 11 and i'm sure if i move the mouse now we're going to see that that's going to come through so yes it's not smooth at all although the game looks okay but let's head over to the settings and see what we can do about that can we get this little system playing straight in any kind of way resolution or settings so we can get a reasonably smooth experience let's try and aim for a 30 fps smooth experience we'll just head over to the settings we'll go to graphics so we are currently running in 1080p we're going to drop that down to 720 if we needed to really do that in tomb raider we do need to do it in this game so there's 720 we're also going to drop the resolution scale down to 80 percent so it's not going to be a full 720p experience here but it should be okay v-sync is disabled and we'll just head down and we're going to go for a low setting 
I think what I'll do is I'll leave the texture quality on a medium setting because at least it will look a little bit better maybe. I'm, I'm not quite sure. So let's just head into game and see what kind of performance we get with that. So we've had a really pretty decent increase in frames per second here. We're currently getting an average of 25 with a 1% low of 22. Unfortunately, the game is still not smooth at all. I'm not quite sure what else we would need to do to even get that. Of course, in a video sequence, the game is running perfectly fine. It's getting a cap limit of 30 FPS here. But once the game starts, we're just not getting the experience that we'd like. The only other thing that we could do is drop the resolution even further. I wouldn't like to do that. I don't think anybody would like to play this game with that kind of thing. And it just doesn't deserve that. It deserves much better because the game is absolutely fantastic. And it looks stunning too. So... What we'll do is we'll just skip past this little intro bit. We'll see if we can drop that texture resolution down or the texture setting down and see if that makes any difference. I'm not holding my breath though because I don't think it's going to be able to do it. I think we're going to be pretty much stuck to where we are. So we'll head back into the settings. We'll go to graphics. We're going to scroll down now. We're going to set everything to low, including that texture quality. We'll save the changes. We'll get back into game. Now, we do seem to have had a little bit of an increase here. We're currently getting an average now of 35 frames per second with a 1% low of 32. The game does not look great at all. You can just see a lot of shimmering on the cat. You can see shimmering on the characters. So it's not the best experience. I would not recommend anybody play this game at this. But I suppose if you are desperate, you could get away with it on this system. We are now getting a 30 FPS experience. 1% lows are slightly lower, but... They're manageable you can get away with it the game doesn't have any major stuttering now you can move the mouse quite smoothly this game does again just like tomb raider recommend that you use a controller to play so maybe with a controller it would be a much better experience but the game is actually playing it's not the greatest experiences so this little system can play some games particularly the older titles uh when it comes to even more modern things like stray I would not recommend Tomb Raider is on the boundary level of being completely playable or not it depends on the resolution I wouldn't like to play games at 720p some of you out there may like playing games at 720p and it will do that if you really want to but there is one thing that this system is fantastic for Now I know if some of you recognize some of those games that he's probably wanted you to get back into your back catalog and get them installed but they are some fantastic quality old school shooters that will run beautifully on a system like this so if you are purchasing a system like this for I don't know maybe some office PC or something like on a desk here we don't really use this for gaming here this is more for work and if you're going to invest in a little machine like this with that little Ryzen APU, you could play some of those old classics and have a little bit of sneaky time off work if you really wanted to. Now, this system isn't going to stay in this way. I think based on what I've learned from it so far, I'm going to do some major upgrading on this. It's not going to be easy because of all that proprietary stuff, but you know what we do here we kind of work our ways around it so definitely subscribe to the channel if you want to catch what we do to this machine because i think you're going to be super impressed i'm going to reach out to some of my contacts today see if we can actually get hold of some things to provide a pretty decent upgrade to it and i'm sure we're going to make it super cool but apart from that i'll catch you guys in the next one